Three Southwest State Secretary, Oyo and Ondo, have said on Sunday they would soon sign the Amotoku bill into law. In Ekiti State, the Commissioner for Information said the state governor, Dr. Kayade Fayami, would sign the bill soon. The Speaker of the Ekiti State House of Assembly, who corroborated the Commissioner's claim, said the Ekiti Amotaku bill would be signed by the governor as soon as possible. Afuye said at the meeting in Abu Ibado, it was resolved that all the houses would soon pass their own bills into law following the normal process of lawmaking. Ekiti is already underground. Our other colleagues will pass their own as well as soon as possible. And definitely the governor's assent, which is the final approval in the law process, will be done. He added that at the meeting of the Conference of Speakers in the Southwest, it was agreed that all the Southwest Houses of Assembly would conduct public hearing on the bill. Joining us now in the studio is an elder statesman, Uma Elazu. Thank you very much for joining us. The current situation we are with having uh, regional state responses to security problems, could it have been anticipated and maybe prevented? When you say anticipated, it should have been anticipated because the response to the constitutional duties of the governors to maintain peace within their states. And because what we have, the kind of insecurity we have, flows across boundaries of states, it became necessary for certain states to come together to deal with the issues that they have. They are within their constitutional rights in what they are doing. So somebody could have anticipated and said, what are these governors doing? They ought to do something in the face of the kind of insecurity and barbarity that is happening in their various states. Uh, some have argued that rather than not do anything, uh, responses like Amote Kumunigwe, which is still in, mm. um, in the betting stage, uh, mm. uh, Shege Kapasa, um, are a stitch in time, or in Choinka's word, a welcome New Year or even Valentine's gift. What do you say to that? <laughs> Valentine's gift? Well, I think that we in Nigeria we don't appear to know what has hit, hit us. But the people who are close to security matters and receive security reports must have known what is going on. So their response is just exactly what people should expect from them. There are no questions about that. I. If you look at the Constitution, I, I don't have it now, gives the way that the 1999 Constitution was made. The governor is in charge of internal security within his states. A police commissioner is posted to him to take instructions from him about what is going on in his state. But another section of the same constitution said that this police commissioner in charge of these states may go to the president to ask whether he should obey what his governor says he should do, which is sort of second. And so you now have a situation where a governor theoretically, is in charge of security of his state. And the police, Nigerian police, is supposed to support him in doing that. But this Nigerian police has to go to the president behind the back of his governor. I wish we had the constitution here so you can read the thing. You see, somebody knew it. Now, then the police council is supposed to post police commissioners, know where they are, with the Inspector General of Police. And you see what is happening? You have to be from a particular section of the country 
to be a police commissioner, or to be inspector general, or to be assistant inspector general. And they post the people there. They are not obeying the governors. This is my own finding, because I have my own research outfit. My own finding is that the commissioners of police in the various states are not obeying their, they are not doing what they ought to do under the governor. So the governor, who is in charge of security of his state, has to do something else. I'm happy that the Western governors prepared a bill because the governor is supposed to execute any law passed by his State House of Assembly. They are wise enough and say, okay, this is what we'd like to do. Here is the bill. Send it to your house. They pass the bill and you implement it. So you, you, you were involved in the drafting of the Constitution? No. I was <laughs> in the Constitutional Debating Committee, which Ab uh, Abdul Salami set up when Abacha died. Oh, okay. So, okay. I was a member. They gave us the draft of the Constitution, which Abacha had already prepared. And they said, debate this. Go around the country and let people say what they believe about this. I remember somebody asked Abdul Salami, have you distributed this to the people who are going to? Because if we are going to have a debate, then the people out there must have seen the Constitution which they were supposed to have. It was not distributed. We were now to carry the Constitution and ask people, uh, what, do you think? What, what do you think about, about this thing? Of course, it was a farce. And some of us in there did tell Nikki Toby, say, this is, this is wrong. So what are the foundational uh, problems, so to speak, that um, we can, or interventions that could have been made to avoid some of these situations we have now? Well, not, the, what we need to do now is to get a new constitution. Is that feasible, in your opinion? Why is it not feasible? People ask, look, this country debated the issues whether they want to be federal or unitary or confederate. Between 1951 and 1959, when the British wanted to give us constitution, the then Secretary of State, I mean, the Chief Secretary to the government, an Englishman called Mr. Foote, Hugh M. Foote, drafted questions and they sent it down to clan councils, to provincial councils, people, what do you want? And after people say in the Eastern region where I was, debated at the local level, everything was packaged to the district officer. The district officer took it to the provincial of, uh, council and people were selected. Then we were, I'm from Ahafia, then we were under the Oweri province. They debated there and from there they selected people who represent them at the national level. And the national council was, I mean the general district, general conference was held in a burden. I'm talking about 1950. So we need to do. We need a to review. go back, sit down, and draft, draft a, a constitution. constitution. It has to come from the people. It should not be imposed. And that is a mistake we have been making since the military took over. They shunted aside the constitutions that we have. Each region had its own constitution. They put them aside. In 1979, uh, Muritala Mohammed came and read a speech and said, You're right, this. Do you know why Chief Awilo decided he was not going so to? So much to talk about. Oh, there's so much to talk about.